Welcome to this LeapFrog BI product demo. In the next 15 minutes, you are going to witness firsthand how LeapFrog BI is transforming traditional data warehouse development into a fast and flexible process. We're going to start with a bold claim. By choosing to use LeapFrog BI, you will spend 75% less time completing development tasks as compared to traditional methods. The demo you're about to watch assumes that requirements have been gathered, source systems researched, and a dimensional model designed. We will be creating this simple five dimension by one fact model in real time through the course of this demo. Let's get started by taking a look at our project setup. No install is required. We can open any modern browser to view our shell project. Life cycles have been defined which describe the target environments that we'll be deploying to. Project prefixes have been created to establish a consistent naming convention. We also have several lifecycle aware connections already created. One for our source system which will be the AdventureWorks 2012 OLTP database and two schema specific connections for our destination database which we are calling SalesMart. Finally, our precedent solution has been set up. This is where we tell LeapFrog BI where generated SSIS packages will be deployed and under whose authority they will execute. We have also set up a notification system which will send alerts when each load process starts, completes, or a failure occurs. We are now ready to start our development clock. We need to first provide a description of our source data to LeapFrog BI, and then we need to create stage components for each source. We're going to use the bulk stage process to complete these two tasks. This process allows us to quickly define the source data to be staged and profiles that data for us. In this demo, we'll be using five tables as our source. After providing the connection details and select statements, as well as any required parameterization, we're ready to generate our profiles. Using the profile generator utility, we're going to point to the configuration file and quickly generate each SSIS profile package. After creating an archive, we're now ready to upload the profiles to LeapFrog BI. Once the profile packages are uploaded, LeapFrog BI is going to parse and extract the metadata describing our source system and create the stage components for us. This becomes our known valid starting point for this data march definition. It's important to point out that LeapFrog BI will never directly connect to any source or destination system. Development is purely metadata driven requiring no connections to be established. Let's take a look at one of our stage components that's been generated. Here is our customer stage component. In the details, we can see this component includes a modified date parameter and we can review the source system fields and field data types. Now we are ready to start creating our data model. We're going to first create a date dimension. This is done by selecting the date dimension template to base our new component on. We give the component a name and select the connection to define this component's destination. In the component detail, I can define the date dimension's interval, range, and key type. We're going to stick with the default values and generate all standard attributes. We can add any additional attributes by using the built-in expression builder. After saving our selections, our date dimension is now ready to deploy. We have four more dimensions and one fact table to create to complete our data model. To speed up development while also ensuring a quality product, we're going to use design patterns to generate all remaining components. As we create these patterns, I'm going to define what LeapFrog BI design patterns are and describe how they are used. 
A design pattern is simply a collection of components, expressions, filters, and related logic that represents a common development task. By selecting a design pattern, many development tasks can be automated. Developers simply complete a short form and the design pattern generator creates LeapFrog BI components to match the selected pattern's behavior. These components can then be modified as needed to meet custom needs. In our demo, we have one source table per target dimension. This will not always be the case. Often, we will have multiple source tables loading the same target object. In this situation, design patterns complete 90% of the work while enabling a developer to create detailed custom logic. The pattern we are currently using creates a dimension and all required logic using an existing stage component as its source. First, the pattern will consolidate the staged data. This is the role of PSA, or the persistent staging area. Next, this pattern sets up a load status tracking process. This process includes a status field in PSA to track each record's status, a sourcing component to extract only unprocessed records from PSA to be loaded into the target dimension, and an update component which will update the load status flag to be marked as processed after the target dimension is loaded. Finally, this pattern creates a dimension which uses the combined foreign keys plus any degenerates as the primary key. The dimension natural key, as well as all required attributes, are selected in the design pattern form. Okay, this completes our four dimension design patterns. We have one more pattern to create, and that would be our fact table. We're going to be using the DP2000 design pattern, which is a pattern that creates a fact table using an existing stage component as its source. We have the same consolidation and load status tracking as well as a grain verification to ensure the data being loaded into the fact table is at the required grain. We select related dimensions to automatically generate foreign key definitions, select fields to be set as degenerates, and measures to be included in our fact table. Finally, we need to select any additional fields that we need to have available to our fact component so that we can later define how we are going to look up our foreign keys. Once this design pattern is generated, we'll get our first look at the generated model starting with our fact table lineage. LeapFrog BI automatically generates interactive graphs that simplify navigation and describe your project data flow. This graph shows us each component involved in the fact load. And this is our simple data model. And finally, our entire data flow for this project. To complete our fact table, we need to define how to look up foreign key values for each related dimension. For example, to collect the correct customer dimension foreign key value, we need to create a join on clause expression that compares our fact source customer ID to the customer dimension's natural key, which is also customer ID. After creating this expression, we can assign it to the foreign key's definition and follow the same steps for the remaining four keys on our fact table. We have one final task to complete before we build and deploy. Our source profile included logic to collect only new records based on a modified date being greater than a parameter value. We're going to collect the maximum modified date from each related PSA component and save this value as a reusable project statistic. With the statistic in place, we can update each stage component's parameter definition to use the statistic as its parameter value. This simple process 
sets up incremental extraction of data from our source systems. We're just about ready to deploy and load our MART. We need to update our precedence definition one last time. I'm going to click the Auto Fill Order button to generate the component execution order, both parallel and serial, based on the project's definition. Leapfrog BI uses existing lineage definitions to arrange all components. I'm going to make a couple of changes. Even though the lineage does not require this, I want the load status update components to run after their related dimensions. After saving this change, we are now ready to start a build job. I'm now selecting the target life cycle, which is the development life cycle. To start a build job, I simply click the Make Current button. The build output will include native SSIS packages, which will create, load, and maintain the defined data model. Included will be centralized configuration, the precedent solution, a schema validation and alteration process, individual components, and an archive which will contain all of the project's output in a single zip file. I'm going to download the lifecycle archive now and save its extracted contents to the location previously defined in the precedence solution. Included in this extracted archive will be all of the built SSIS packages including one deployment package. Once we run this deployment package, our MART will be ready to be loaded. The deploy package's job is to set up our configuration, create all required databases and schemas, validate any already deployed objects, and create SQL agent jobs that will automate the load process. We have now developed and deployed our target data model in just under 15 minutes. Now let's take a couple minutes to load this march so we can see the final results. After refreshing my database and job list, we can see that the deploy process has created our target sales mart database as well as jobs to start the load process. I'm going to start the load process by running the reset job manually. This job is typically set up on a recurring schedule at the interval that the load process should occur. By monitoring the precedence table, we can get details on the progress of each task. Job status moves from 0 to 3, meaning pending, assigned, running, and complete. We just received our email alert letting us know that the load process has started. All tasks are now complete, so let's take a look at what has been created. We can do a simple select on our fact table to see that we have our load times, all of our foreign keys, our degenerates, and our measures. We also decided to add referential integrity, so we have foreign keys created. Doing another select on our dimension, we see our slow change dimension tracking fields, we have our natural key and all the attributes that we selected. And there's our load status complete email notification. Maintaining a data warehouse can be a very time consuming task. Leapfrog BI simplifies this process as well by providing a core set of reports that monitor key data integration values. By using this extendable and pre-built SSRS reporting project, we can proactively identify potential problems before they occur. These simple reports give us rapid access to project and component level performance counters such as load times and categorized record counts. Project configuration and current statistic values are also just a click away. Thank you very much for watching this LeapFrog BI product demo. Contact us today and start reaping the benefits of Agile Data Warehousing on your next BI project.